Hello everyone and welcome to my review of the Honda VFR 750. So this bike is from the year 1996. It's the fourth generation of the Honda VFR 750. It was manufactured between was when this bike came out in the late 80s I think it was I think it was 86 I think it was 1986 the first VFR 750 came out ah, so let's take a look around Styling wise you can see that it's a, it's kind of a classic looking bike but uh, I don't know I think it looks pretty cool if you're looking for that sort of modern look on a bike this is not the sort of bike you would go for but I like it so let's look around here as you can see it's got a single sided swing arm the single-sided swing arm was added to these in 1990. So that was in the third generation VFR 750. And they kept it for the fourth generation. And I think for really all generations of VFR afterwards, whether it was the VFR 800 or anything subsequent. So we can see here. It's got the twin brake discs at the front it's got the integrated indicators at the front as well and on the rear so there's nothing really sticking out to get caught in anything it's got this sort of like um we know we'll see it better on the other side it's got these fins and then unique to the fourth generation is this sort of air duct, which I don't even know if it's really functional. I'm pretty sure I've looked into it and I don't know if actually, you know, it kind of looks like an air scoop. I think it's just there for looks. I think one of the best things that they did with these VFR 750s looks wise is that they kept the color, the colors on them quite plain. So it's either all red, all blue, all green, all white, whatever, all black. A lot of the Honda bikes from the uh, 90s and 80s, they have these sort of multicolored patterned color schemes and I think they look pretty naff and pretty dated at this stage. But this one dates pretty well, even if it still looks a little bit old, old school. But I like it, I think it looks pretty cool. Downside about this bike, first thing, it's just weight. It is about 240 kg with a full tank and and all the oil and all that. So it's pretty heavy. It's hard to uh, maneuver around. I use the front handlebars to maneuver it, pull it around my yard and into the storage unit. But uh, 
you know if it goes if it goes off balance it's it's a it's a tough bike to try and get back to recenter so if that bike goes over a little bit when it's not really moving you know there's a good chance that bike's going to go over so trying to move it around is just a bit of a pain so let's give it a little bit of a rev so the vfr it's famous for this v4 engine famous for having the uh, gear driven cams uh, all the VFR 750s from the first generation to the fourth generation had the gear driven cams um, as did the fifth generation but after that they moved away from the uh, gear driven cams the gear driven cams kind of contributed to I suppose the um, reliability of the engines I guess the uh, gear driven cams were considered to be a lot more reliable than the models that it would have replaced which had the chain driven cams so as you can see here I've replaced the stock exhaust with a black widow um, I've also replaced the not just the end cam but the exhaust system the full exhaust system with a stainless steel pipes that I got from black widow I have a video on how to install that but they're uh, the uh, stock pipes, they have a tendency to rust and particularly with uh, bikes that got a lot of use in all weather conditions, particularly here in Ireland or Britain, um, they're going to get a lot of abuse those pipes and a lot of them do rust and kind of end up with some rust holes in them so I prefer the look of these uh, stainless steel pipes anyway. Uh, the other thing apart from the uh, single-sided swing arm it does come with this center stand so one of the great things about this bike is just that center stand and um, single-sided swing arm together and I'll show you why let me just turn off the bike let's just open it up here it's probably something to look for if you're gonna buy one of these bikes slide that back take it off and it comes with this tool now this is the OEM on the tool to tighten the chain you put it up on the single or the center stand and you stick this tool which just goes in here somewhere connects in you loosen up a bolt which is just there loosen up that bolt and then you just give this a little bit of a twist until it tightens the chain and this is one of the great things about these bikes this is why this is one of the reasons why i would find it difficult to park with this bike because not every bike comes with a with this feature it makes it really convenient particularly if you're doing a lot of touring or if you're planning to do a bit of touring there's not a whole lot of space otherwise underneath the seat but there is sufficient for a few tools and few little small items probably just to show you the dash I'm not the biggest fan of the dash some people seem to like this dash I think it looks a bit um, plain and boring but it does have your uh, fuel gauge temperature gauge it has your uh, tachometer and your speedometer the wing mirrors are really good on this bike um, and then the other thing is if you are buying one of these bikes make sure that it comes with the uh, rear grips they can be stored away underneath the seat so make sure that they're not missing so that's really it on the outside as you can see just looking around there is really little or no rust on this bike so for a bike that's 26 years old if you look at all the little uh, bolts and fittings really there's no rust on anything the only thing that has a little bit of rust is the center stand and the side stand and apart from that it's pretty much rust free you can check all the bolts on the uh, 
brake discs and brake calipers and they're all really in perfect condition. This bike came from Sweden actually, so it was well kept for uh, the large duration of its life. So when I bought it, it was in pretty good nick. There is a few little scratches around it, but that's really all. Um, he did, whoever owned it previously in Sweden, they did put these little LED lights, they installed these little LED lights, which I have deleted since, because they were blue. And I just don't like the look of them. So apart from the fact that there's two little holes at the front, the bike is uh, pretty much, it's looking pretty well. The fuel tank stores a lot. Obviously you would have to for a sports tour. It's pretty easy on fuel consumption as well. So let's start it up. So these bikes are kind of famous for just that sound. So with the stock exhaust, it doesn't sound that great. It's actually quite quiet. But with the aftermarket exhaust installed, it just sounds really good. So let's have a listen. Oop, chokes on. VFR750s, um, they have a particular reputation. Reputation is really for just build quality and reliability. Um, as I mentioned, the, the gear-driven cams do play a role in just that engine reliability because if you have um, chain-driven cams, eventually those chains uh, slacken they can possibly break so with the gear driven cams that's not really a possibility they don't really wear not that I've ever heard of anyway and then the other thing with the engine is you know for a V4 engine that's just got tons of torque um, and it's so reliable you kind of expect that it's got some you know special technology or it's super advanced well I've kind of read through the manual and I've done a lot of work on this bike myself and explored the engine and the engines are actually they're actually quite simple there's actually nothing really that complicated about the engines and I think that's probably part of the reason why they're so reliable because they kind of use not an old technology per se but a, a tested and proven technology and they're just built to a good standard so it's not uncommon for owners to report a hundred thousand plus miles on these bikes I've seen a couple with two hundred thousand miles that's, that really is a lot of kilometers or a lot of miles. This particular bike has uh, I think about 55,000 miles. So it's about 87 or just over 87,000 kilometers. I haven't had any issues with it engine wise um, so that's kind of like just on reliability and just I've also talked about how there's just very low um, levels of corrosion and rust on the motorcycle now obviously if you're riding these bikes in areas where there's a lot of salt on the roads 
that's obviously going to destroy the metal and it's going to cause corrosion. But under normal riding circumstances or normal riding conditions, and I ride this bike a lot in the rain, I wash it a lot with power washer and uh, you know I just don't really see rust coming up on it afterwards. It's a completely different story on my um, Ducati Monster and other bikes that I've had where you can power wash a bike and then find that your brakes have seized afterwards. So don't have that worry with this bike and that's just really down to the build quality. And I think by build quality I think they just did everything, simple things right on this bike. Like the only innovation in the engine is that uh, uh, gear driven cam. So the other thing that the bike is famous for is just torque. And this is, this is one of the reasons why I am kind of reluctant to sell it. Because not that many bikes actually have the sort of torque range or torque power that this bike has. No matter what gear you're in, I'm in six gear at the moment. I'm going down, well, rev range, I'm still up around three, but I can go down to really low revs, bring it down really low, and I can recover that. I can just hit on the throttle, and this bike just, li it just lifts straight out. And you probably can't hear it, you can't feel it, but I can hear it and I can feel it. There's no strain on the engine. The engine just feels super smooth all the time. It's almost like driving or riding a, an automatic. You just don't really have to think about the gear. Now obviously sometimes you do, if you really come down to a really sharp corner and you're in sixth gear, you come down and you have to come down the gears. Otherwise you can feel the engine under a little bit of stress, but it's actually, it's actually I feel it's quite rare that I ever feel that. So yeah, I just love that torque, that low down torque, and it means that any other motorcycle that I ride afterwards, if there's always just that little bit of a disappointment about that when I come down to the low torque range and I try to accelerate out of a corner, I'm kind of, I can just feel that engine just struggling a little bit and I know that I'm in the wrong gear. Reliability, that's the torque, that's the build quality. These are, and also that single sided swing arm, these are the reasons why I just think it's a class bike. Also, that sound, it just sounds amazing. Now, maintenance wise, um, I've done a lot, I've really done most things on this motorcycle. I've um, Calibrated the carburetors or synch synchronized the carburetors. I have um, checked the valve clearances. I haven't adjusted them because they weren't really out. Uh, I've done a lot of work even in around the back of this dashboard to replace um, little light bulbs that were gone. And, and to be honest with you, everything on this bike uh, is. It's all doable. I mean, like, there's not overly complicated. Um, there's not that's really hard, I suppose, to get to. Apart from the uh, carburetor synchronization, if you go to sync the carburetors, uh, that's a little bit of a, a little, little bit of a tough one. You do need a specialist tool. So it's basically just a screwdriver. I think it's a flat-headed screwdriver with a bend on the end and it has to be a long one as well because the carbs are hidden away even if you take off the uh, fuel tank it makes no difference you still have to you still need that tool it's very hard to reach in to the little um, screws to adjust the carburetors Apart from that, everything else is, uh, it's all doable if with just some basic tools. Um, 
you should buy the Haynes manual or the uh, service, the Honda service manual for this bike if you're going to work on it and I think you'll probably follow it pretty easily so then just out on the road this bike is really comfortable um, you know you can go for hours on this saddle and you know it's still comfortable you don't have to worry about a sore ass at the end of a ride obviously this is what you would expect from a sports tour it should be able to do that um, and then just for rideability you know it is a real fun bike not just for touring but for if you want to take a bike out and, and just kind of race it this is this is bike is really excellent it's just nice and flickable it is as i said heavy but it turns in nicely as long as you have good um, tires this bike is nice and uh, turns into corners nice and easily I wouldn't say it's super flexible, flickable, it's quite steady on the road. But uh, it's, I find it quite reliable on the twisties. I've gone out with guys on riding R R1s and GSXRs and you know this bike will keep up with them no butter. And obviously the, these guys are not professional riders. And, Riding on open roads is a lot different to riding on the track, but I'm sure that this bike in, the, in capable hands would more than hold its own on a racetrack. I would recommend this bike for beginner riders um, just because of the fact that it's so reliable, the fact that it's uh, just easy to adjust that chain. Um, because it's got loads of torque and it's just easy to ride it really is everything that a you know a new rider who's inexperienced with changing gears should really be on because you know that's the one problem when you're when you're really starting out on a motorcycle you're gonna find that you're in the wrong gear all the time and that's not going to be a problem with this The only reason I would say it's maybe not the best for a new rider is just because of the weight. Um, I think you're going to let it drop a few times if you're a new rider just because it is heavy and it's going to catch you off guard. Um, and then the other thing is for, for U-turns, because it's quite heavy, uh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to do a tight U-turn in. But they're the only downside to this motorcycle I suppose. Um, the brakes are quite good, they're not as good as what they are on my Ducati Monster, but I'm sure I could upgrade, upgrade the uh, brake lines to um, the reinforced brake lines and I'm sure that would improve things a lot more. Also these brake lines are probably the original, they're 26 years old, they're probably meant to be replaced after a certain mileage or a certain number of years. Um, they haven't been in this case. So look, that's it, that's my review for the VFR 750. Let's finish it off here. I'm on some twisty roads, so let's just give it some gas and just show you what this bike can do.